Okay, so the next step, once you have uh, your zoom defined and you wanna make sure that whatever is on the microscope itself, so 1.25 is the same as what's on the zoom window here, which is 1.25. Once you've made that decision, uh, something you can do is adjust the width. If you've zoomed in a lot, you can uh, narrow the width to get more power into your sample without sacrificing evenness of illumination. Uh, the way you do this, there's a table in my guide that explains that relationship. Okay. So if you look in here, uh, in section 8, there's light sheet parameters and how to adjust them optimally. And then there's figure 8.2. So this has an explanation of the width. So the idea for this is the following. Uh, in the very middle, in the Y dimension, the light sheets will be brightest, and then as you move away from that, they'll be dimmer. So in the middle, things will be brighter, and as you move away, it'll be dimmer. Now, if you extend the width, that flattens out. So that's shown here. So this, for example, these are measurements of the intensity in the middle towards the side, and so you can see if the width is low, it's very bright in the middle, and then it sort of drops off. But if the width is 100, it's very even throughout. So um, essentially, if you're using, uh, if you're very zoomed in, you can get away with a, a lower width than 100% with still quite even illumination. So for example, if our total magnification were 5, so if our zoom were half that, or 2.5, 2 we could get away with a width of 60% uh, or 80% without paying much of a price in terms of evenness. Uh, so if, if you find that uh, you're zooming in a lot and your sample is kind of dim, you can look at this to get a sense of how much you can reduce the width to get a little bit more power into your sample, okay? This sample doesn't have that problem, but I thought I would point that out uh, in case you're in a situation where it might, you might benefit from this.